Let's talk prototypes. So I actually have really good news. We're not gonna need what we think of as a traditional prototype all the time when we're trying to get our products licensed. Now this is great news because Traditionally, getting a prototype created, right? Working with maybe a prototype house, doing it yourself, whether that's kind of you know, putting together a hodgepodge of things you got from Home Depot or using a 3D printer um, or a bunch of these different techniques, right? You could make your own mold at home, all these crazy manufacturing techniques you could prototype your idea with. Those typically are fairly expensive, right? And they, whether you start at a couple hundred dollars from Home Depot and, and get these, like I said, the hodgepodge of, of uh, items to, to create your prototype, or you start getting into 3D printing and that's going to cost you, you know, a couple hundred dollars up to a couple thousand dollars. If you work with a prototype house, that could cost you thousands of dollars. And to give you some real world and, you know, this as of, you know, the end of 2022, um, the first way that I went about creating a prototype or rather starting to get an, a design and I needed really a CAD file, 3D design file um, out there into the world, I paid a engineer to an industrial designer rather um, which is more or less just a design engineer that can work in a 3D software. I paid them $3,500 to help me create a, a file or create a, a digital prototype of my product that then I could, um, you know, get done at a prototype house or I could 3D print myself or I can make the mold, all that excitement. But here's the good news. If you're trying to get a product license and if you're anything like me and, you know, a lot of the other, I think, inventors in this community, you have a lot of ideas, right? And you maybe have a list in your phone of, of ideas that you eventually want to take to market someday. If you were to prototype all those ideas, guys, we'd be, we'd probably be broke. We have, you know, that would cost you, I don't know if you had four ideas and it costs you a couple thousand dollars each. I mean, that's easily $10,000. Two plus two is four minus one. That's three quick maths. Um, all for potentially nothing if the idea doesn't really go anywhere with the companies that you're looking to license with. So it can be really dangerous, I think, to start pouring money into ideas. However, on the flip side of that, it can also be very reassuring that you could potentially get a license deal maybe without ever even having a physical prototype. And when I say that, I want to come back to, I do think it does you a favor if you know a good amount about the manufacturing process or at least about the potential manufacturing process of the product that you're trying to license. Wow, that's very convenient. And I want to start just to give you examples. As I mentioned, I had hired an industrial designer um, on Upwork, and that cost me about $3,500 to work with him to go from, you know, just an idea all the way to a finished design file uh, that, you know, was a dot step file, which is kind of the standard 3D CAD model. But then I could send to my local 3D printer to have it printed in a couple various technologies for me. Now, that was one option. Unfortunately, when I got through that process, I didn't love the end result. It wasn't perfect. And instead of being that guy that you go back and forth and back and forth with this guy, you know, it really wasn't his fault that I had directed him to, to make it, you know, not exactly what I needed it to be in the end. I just kind of accepted it. And I'm actually going to probably use that design later. But I instead then went to another designer on Upwork, uh, a more international designer that lives in Morocco. And he was a much more cost-effective solution to iterate a new idea. And actually, let me just dive into showing you uh, one of some of my first prototypes that relate to that scenario exactly. All right, so after I had gone through the whole design process with the Upwork designer, I needed to go back to the drawing board. And I actually just went to thingiverse.com, which is a 3D uh, CAD file website. And I actually printed out, this is a... Um, a pencil holder and it's kind of it's smushed and it's a long or rather twisted more than it would be if it was the standard design uh, but it was just a free design on thingiverse and i thought that this actually might be able to um, do the job and kind of yield the performance that i was looking for in my eventual design but well, not but, but this is actually a really good start because it was free. So I took this file. That's when I started working with the cheaper international designer on Upwork. And my second iteration, and this is kind of the end material that I was looking to go for. Now, the designer that I started to work with, we then came out or we made the design file. We actually just kind of went away from this completely and did something from the ground up. This was my next prototype. And now I had this printed through... Um, Zometry, Xometry. I'll put the uh, link in the description. But it's a 3D print house. Um, I think that they just outsource the 3D printing to a variety of solutions. But this was done with, see how flexible it is? This is a Shore 20 to 24, which uh, Shore value is really just the ability 
um, the flexibility rather of the uh, material. Um, and you can find shore value charts online, so I won't bore you with that. But this was my second prototype, and this was actually made on an HP 3D printer called a Polyjet. It's more or less an inkjet printer, but HP has the, the term Polyjet um, trademarked, I believe. But super flexible. Um, I got to choose the shore value, shore value 20 to 24. Uh, it smells really interesting as well. Uh, so that's, I, I wish you guys could smell it through the camera. But so that was my next prototype. Then I got into, so this cost me about 400 and, or excuse me, this one cost me about $200 um, after, you know, it was kind of expedited shipping and all that. It cost about 160 and then after shipping, it was maybe two, about 200 or 210 So that's this. And this was getting closer, right? But after we did some functional testing of this, you know, I'll throw that in the video. It, it wasn't working exactly as um, I had imagined, but luckily we had a second version of this which was much smaller holes. Now, when I stepped into this type of prototyping, I ended up getting a 3D printer, a resin-based pr 3D printer, which is SLA. Um, and this first design, if you saw this, this was printed in the FDM printing technology, right? So FDM printing is more or less an additive printing technology where this sits on the bed of the 3D printer and then it, the extruder extrudes the material and builds it up from the ground up. A 3D resin-based printer um, has a vat of resin and then it pulls the design up and out just a little background on 3d printing so once i got the 3d printer i was actually able to make the next prototype in-house or in my literal spare uh living room which is really cool so this is the next one the next resin i had on hand was a 3d translucent material so this is the second sorry there's a little bit of uh glue on there still there it goes so this was the next prototype and I made this much smaller holes as you can see. Um, it is hard plastic, so I can't bend it, but it basically gave me all the, the fit and function that I was looking for. It's a little scaled down from the, um, from the true design, but it gave me a really functional model or test model that I could use to further prototype. And our latest iteration is actually the exact same design, but printed in a flexible resin that I was able to get. And this is a shore value of, I think about 80. And it's actually over time cured quite nicely. So it's a lot more flexy than when it came off the printer, but you can tell it's a black material. Um, so now we're gonna make it clear. We wanna do some different colors, mess around with some fragrances. Um, I can't tell you too much about the, the end product or the end, you know, what this is, um, but you'll find out soon enough. All right, so I just wanna walk you guys through my you know, crazy experimentation with prototyping. And I did spend some money on this idea because I really do believe in it. I believe in the, the end potential of it. And I think that it makes me feel more empowered that I have the most information possible, that I know how this would be manufactured, that I have confidence in the way that we've created the prototypes. And that's gonna give me confidence talking to the end companies about how they can then sell this to this their customers, right? And how they can manufacture this. So it really empowered me by going through this process and learning more about these different types of, you know, prototyping and the different types of manufacturing and all that stuff and costing, frankly. So since I've made these prototypes, I have a rough idea of how much this material costs, how much the labor costs, how they would do it, right? The types of um, silicon injection molding that it would get done with. Now, a lot of these companies already know, obviously, because they're making all their products like that. But it gives me that idea and that knowledge to really sit in a meeting, I think, and, and speak confidently about how this, you know, product would fit into their product lineup. So I say that all the Say really that you know you can do it without a physical prototype that's the cool part and now so if you didn't have a physical prototype like we have here you can simply there's so many options nowadays for working with people whether it's on Fiverr or Upwork to give you a, or to create a 3d rendering for you typically they're gonna make a CAD model right um, and a CAD is just a computer aided design a 3d mock-up uh, in a software of your product and then they can export that to different design files like Blender. Um, there's some other different ones as well. Or even simply, and that's kind of more in the 3D rendering world, so they could spit you out a 3D render of your product, which then you could put in all your sales collateral and everything that you're you know, pitching to these companies. Or you could even go the 2D route and put together something in Photoshop that's a mock-up of your idea. And then you can approach companies with that as well. So it can be as simple as that. And that's really what's empowering, I think, for us as inventors is we don't need to go super deep into all these inventions because frankly, it's time. This has taken me about 
six months in total iteration, guys, to, to fully do. So with that all being said, I appreciate you guys watching. Um, think about that when you're you know thinking about your prototype and you're working on your uh, next product that you're looking to license. Uh, and check out our other videos for a longer explanation of product licensing. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you.